Good morning. We are greeting you from St. Peter's Church in South Windsor this morning. I'm grateful for the presence of Tim Mascarinas, who was writing music for us, Andy Zeidler, who was our lector, and Shirley Zeidler, who came with him. And the two of them will join me and Tim in singing the hymns that we have selected for today. So I hope you will join along at home. If you have a prayer book, we'll walk you through that, offering page numbers or you may have also downloaded the liturgy that we emailed out on uh, Friday. So um, please feel free to join in. If you wanna let us know that you're here, we would be grateful for that also. Feel free to leave a like, a love, a comment, um, just something to say, hi, we're here. And uh, with no further ado, we will go ahead and begin. The Book of Common Prayer on page, uh, no, we don't begin the Book of Common Prayer. We begin in the hymnal with hymn number 440, Blessed Jesus at thy word. Now turn to the Book of Common Prayer, page 76. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. The confession continues on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The invitatory begins on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and, and our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory praise to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Please join me in reciting together the Vanity on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together Psalm number 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfaithful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. The light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Let us say together Canticle number 14, and that's on page, I don't know what page, what is it? 90. Okay, thank you. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. 
Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you shall show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercies. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 through 41. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform, perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you not want or why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do anything. They answered him, 
You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Earlier this week, I read online an article by Parker Palmer, a known author, theologian, spiritual leader, and educator. Parker Palmer, for many years, did a column or interview with On Being, an online place begun by Krista Tippett, who many years ago started a program called Speaking of Faith on Public Radio International. Speaking of Faith was intended to treat religious and spiritual aspects of life as seriously as politics and economics. On being, as it has evolved, takes up the great questions of meaning in 21st century lives and at the intersection of spiritual inquiry, science, social healing, and the arts. What does it mean to be human, it asks. How do we want to live? And who will we be to each other? The article posted earlier this week and that I shared on St. Peter's Facebook page has to do with mud and muck of all things, messiness and dirt and water, and that place where if you were to go out and walk in it, you would find your shoes sucking as they went from step to step. And Parker talked about how even in mud and muck, in that place that seems like death or the remnants of death, the hummus of the earth, literally, would be found the seeds of new life, of transformation and new growth. It caught my attention because we've certainly had our share of rain lately, but we're also in this period in our lives these days where we are very much in a mud and muck kind of place. We are in an unlikely place. For all intents and purposes, we are quarantined for an indefinite period of time, in effect giving up our routines and structures of our familiar life in order that we may all have a full and extended life. We have been thrust into uncertainty, perhaps anxiety even, and the need to hunker down, as the saying goes, causing us to draw on resources around us and available to us to establish a new normal. More than at any other time, perhaps, we seek a sense of ordinary and normal in an effort to maintain a balance against this onslaught of extraordinary measures imposed on us for our own sake. Enter Jesus. Prompted by an encounter with a blind man in today's reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus' disciples ask a question about sin Jesus bypasses the question by healing the man, deflecting, if you will, asserting that the man's blindness is but an opportunity for God's glory to be revealed. Jesus uses his spit and some dirt, ordinary, everyday components of life, to create mud that he then smears on the man's eyes, and then he sends the man to the pool of water to wash away the mud, and his sight is restored. In the face of this miracle, there ought to be great rejoicing. A man blind from birth now sees, thanks be to God. And yet, his neighbors and community, the Pharisees and even the man's parents are stuck on the question of sin and the authority and therefore the credibility of Jesus to perform this healing. The opportunity to embrace the gift of God's grace and power delivered to them in the midst of ordinary life is squandered. 
Life is not ordinary for us right now, but there are parallels for us in this story. As we look to reimagine and repurpose our days, do we find meaning in the reordering of them? Do we see an opportunity? Do we recognize in the mud and the muck that is the messiness of life in the time of the coronavirus, the seeds of possibility, the green shoots of new life? Can we trust that the God who surpasses all understanding provides for us a still, centered place in which we may dwell in the broad comfort of his love and grace? I'll offer a hint toward saying yes to these questions. Look to the Jesus of Lent and the stories we have shared thus far in Lent. They have been stories with starring roles held by ordinary things, earthy things, like ashes, wilderness, birthing, and water. Each of these things inescapably organic and in a manner of speaking available to us in our daily lives, or at least a portion of our experience at some time in our life. In other words, Jesus invites us to look to the world around us to encounter the living God who turns water into wine and mud into sight. In our 21st century lives, we may be more inclined to delve into the routines of morning coffee, walking the dog, doing the dishes, reading scripture or a daily devotion, escaping into a really good novel, perhaps erecting creations with Legos, or emptying a box of crayons to assist an emerging imagination at the nearby kitchen table. If we let ourselves engage fully in acts of ordinariness, we cannot help but find within us the roots of our connection to God, the one who sustains us through our routines, our attentiveness to others, and to our own connections to the world beyond us. If we're not rubbing elbows with God in these moments, what is getting in the way? As we bump and stumble through our new normal, what is blinding us to God's presence and hope? If we allow ourselves to draw on the things that occupy us and surround us, how might God use those very real and tangible means to renew our sight? In this story of a blind man gaining his sight, there is still a caution to offer. Born blind, it would take some time for the man to understand the vision restored to him. He no doubt understood some concepts, had a vocabulary, and knew something about the world around him. But he now would begin to apply a veiled knowledge to a real world. He would identify words with shapes and colors, actions with phrases experiences with a known part of his own being. Our own transformations can look like this too. Like the seed embedded in the mud and the muck, it takes time for shoots of life to gain purchase and stretch toward the light of the world that beckons us forth, breaking through the ground and barrier of protective earth and joining the world in a new experience of freedom and vulnerability. And lest we lose sight of the nugget tucked into this gospel story, the pool of water that rinsed the mud of healing from the eyes of the blind man means scent. How might God send us forth to make an impact on the world from our place of physical confinement, but not social confinement? I encourage you in these days in which we too feel vulnerable, to remember that none of us are alone in spirit. As the body of Christ, we rally around and support one another. We encourage, teach, and equip each other. And we take to the world the good news of this experience, of redemption as harbingers of new and transformed life. To serve our neighbors, those who are hungry, those who are frail, those who may not be able to see beyond their own protected world. Immerse yourself gladly in the mud and the muck. 
the messiness of life limited by COVID-19 and rejoice in the healing contained within it. Rinse yourself in the gladness of God's love and go forth, freed from blindness and renewed by the light of Christ. Amen. Let us say together canticle number 16, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in reciting the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 96 in the prayer book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oops, that's me. Sorry. <laughs> we continue with uh, the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I turn it to Andy. <laughs> Let us continue with suffrage B, which is on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and all. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Okay. On this day, our intercessions 
We pray for Ian and Laura, our bishops, for Nigerian bishops John and Marcus, and for Anne, our rector. We pray for the sick and suffering and for those in need of comfort, especially Lucy Morgan, Laura, Dennis, and their newly delivered son, Jim Redinger, Alyssa Grenier, Lily Vartanian and her family, Pearl Minch, Don Goslaw, and those committed to our ongoing prayers. We pray for those afflicted with coronavirus, their families and communities, for health care workers, professionals, and loved ones, and for all people and communities impacted by efforts to slow the spread of this disease. We pray for the repose of the soul of Rowena Malacora Bautista, Betty McDonald, and their families. We pray for the concerns and organizations supported by St. Peter's through mission, especially Episcopal Relief and Development. We give thanks for members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad, and for their families, especially Kenneth Fraley Jr. and Kevin Merrill. For victims of natural disasters and human violence throughout the world, especially the communities of Middle Tennessee devastated by tornadoes. In our parish cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the Ministry of the Property Commission, for parish members, the Taylor family, Nancy, Otor Nancy Torchio Zemko, and for Shelley Traska. We join Sarah Healy and Ingrid Memon in celebrating birthdays, and for the Reverend Ann and Ken Fraley in celebrating an anniversary this week. And we offer thanks for the health of our parish family. lost the other page. Just one. Okay. <laughs> I invite you to take a moment to include your own intercessions as we pray silently together. We continue with a collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today, gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A collect for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor, become over, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We continue now with hymn number 645, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. <laughs> Four 
six. prayer of St. Chrysostom found on page 102 in the prayer book. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We conclude before our dismissal with pay, uh, hymn number 490, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, all three verses.
May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. I remind you that during the week on Tuesday and Thursday mornings, we gather here at 7.30 for morning prayer. And on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we meet here on Facebook Live at 8 o'clock for Compline. In between times, we stay in touch through email and light breezes. And at any time, if there is a need or you have a concern or a prayer request, please do reach out, either posting here on this page, calling the office, or sending us an email so that we may be in touch and stay aware of your particular needs and circumstances. May you have a blessed day, and thank you for joining us.